I can play with that all day. Hey, my name is Dan Shimolinsky. People like to call me Shimmy, and you can too. I am a bassist, sound designer, and composer living in Los Angeles, and today we have a fun one, a quirky one for sure. This is the Brown Auto Vary 64, and I was not familiar with this drum machine at all. I'd never heard one, heard of one, just completely unbeknownst to me, but there's some really, really interesting sounds in here. As a guy who frequents a lot of recording studios, I do see my fair share of drum machines. Drum machines will be lying around studios in every nook and cranny, I swear. Sometimes I've seen 15 or 20 different ones, and I never know what the they are. But it got me thinking, they're all so unique and so specific to what they do that really it's kind of a mixed bag of tricks, that special sauce, if you will. As I think I've said in previous videos, I personally am a fan of having the largest arsenal of sounds as I can so that I kind of know where to go for specific things. And these are just really, really fun to play with. So without further ado, let's get started. We have just one part for the Auto Vary 64, but that's minimizing it a little bit because there's quite a lot here, and it's one of those that I think I can play straight down from the top to the bottom. So please enjoy this performance of Brown Auto Vary 64. There you have it. So talking about the characteristics of these sounds, right off the bat we can tell this is not the most punchy kit that you can buy. It's definitely not as punchy as the 808s, the Black DR, the Red 522. This is kind of a little bit of a noisier, more lo-fi, softer approach to drums. Which makes sense, right? It was supposed to sit above an organ, which is already a really harmonically rich and thick instrument. So it's kind of just meant to be a uh, soft backbone of whatever you're trying to do. Just a quick little blurb about how it's laid out on the key bed. So each octave is its own kind of kit. But you'll notice there are slight variations in what's playing on each key. So it's not one of those situations where like each F sharp is a snare and each G sharp is a, is a hi-hat. It's a little bit different. Sometimes you get sounds where the drums are playing at the same time. Let me see if I can find one here. Right, like that's kind of a kick and a pop as well. Since the machine itself only has a handful of drum sounds that it can make, that literally could probably fit in between one single octave, but this is kind of giving you the vary or the variation side of the AutoVary 64. The variations from octave to octave range from subtle to not so subtle. I even think they are specific to the type of kit used in specific grooves on the machine, if I'm understanding that correctly. But regardless, there's a ton here. They're all super unique and just a really, really great way to add to your mixed bag of drum sounds. Let's head over to the program section where I have made all of them. Yes, all 20. I know we typically make a program from scratch, but since I've made 20 here, I figured it'd be more fun to dive into them and uh, talk a little bit about how I approach this kit. There are some simple ones like compression kick, crispy hi-hat, deepest kick, and then there are some other ones where I tried to take kind of a left field approach to this kit, like cool keys and cute tunes. So uh, let's just let's jump into it. This first program is called Compression Kit, and basically I just wanted to try and make these things punchy. You know, as I said, it's kind of a softer approach to drum kit. It's a little wispier, a little more noisier, lo-fi, definitely thinking of samba kits and kind of that push button to get the Latin groove kind of thing. And so I was like, well, let's throw some compression, some digital distortion on it, a little bit of EQ, tighten up the stereo image to kind of focus it a little bit more and really just see if we can get this thing to punch. That's basically it. And then I routed a couple things to the mod wheel to give it some distance, a little bit of a tone shift, bring in some reverb to kind of make it sound further away as you raise the mod wheel.
Couple standard treatments here. I did a really crispy hi-hat with as much analog distortion as I could take on a hi-hat. You don't want it to be too thick because then it's kind of eating up your mix, but I felt like this was adequately crispy. I routed the mod wheel to the cutoff frequency of the high pass, which currently is pretty high up there because you don't want a ton of low end information in your hi hats. And we definitely acquired some using the analog distortion. But if you want more, you can raise your mod wheel and get a little bit of a darker crispy hi hat. And since the resonance is pretty high up, you do get some kind of formant effect there as well. Deepest kick, pretty self-explanatory. Just tried to go for the lowest, subbiest kick I could. You know, the kick is not particularly overpowering. It's not rich with sub information. So kind of had to bring that out through the uh, distortion digital unit here, some EQing and compression. Yeah. Did a little bit of a delayed splashy kind of sound here. This is really fun. I used three splashy noisy sounds from the kit and kind of did a one note same for all of them. Put it through an analog filter, did some EQing through the Bucket Brigade delay, and then finally Alexi Reverb to get this pretty neat noise splash. gets a little bit cleaner as you raise the mod wheel so the delay comes down, the filter analog opens up. And that's a groove in and of itself. Yeah. You know me, I had to mess with the bit brush to get us a nice 8-bit sounding crushy hit, and I put it through the chorus, which is kind of the secret to getting that kind of really traditional 8-bit sound. That was kind of a little bit of natural phasing out of those tiny speakers or whatever. I don't know what it is, but chorus after the bit brush always seems to help. And as I've done several times before, I routed the mod wheel to the depth and sample rate of the bit brush. Yes. I did a tight pop kind of snare sound, a lot of compression, really accentuating that kind of super boxy 200 to 300 range in the EQ, a nice cut around 1K, accentuating the attack of it, maybe around 2K. And then I think our mod wheel, yes, brings in the volume of part two. I think that's like a noise layer. We'll check it out in a second. And also the wet dry on the verb. So here is the pop snare by itself. and we bring up the mod wheel. And what is that part two? One second. Ah, yeah, so it's just a little spritz of noise just to kind of simulate the snare aspect of the bottom of a snare drum. I think it's a pretty punchy snare. And you could even accentuate that even more if you wanted to throw an envelope on there and kind of just really fine tune how quick your decay is. It's a fine line between entering hi-hat territory and getting that kind of traditional poppy gunshot kind of snare sound. It's really, really fun. Here's a little bit of rain stick for you. So just took three noisy areas using offset from these samples and put kind of a slow attack and a little bit of a longer decay on it to kind of simulate that shh sound, that wave sound, right? Wow, didn't even realize Matrix has a lot going on. So 
So it's kind of widening the stereo image, adding some motion through those LFOs. And if you're just curious what this sounds like without the slow attack and without the offset, I'll show you what the quote unquote source material is. So without offset and attacks being super slow and kind of just returning everything to normal, this is what the sound would sound like. So a lot more attack, a lot more front end, a little tubby. So using that offset tool can really search into the samples of these drums and maybe just pick out some nice noise like I did there. Before we get into the grooves and the kicks, I have to show you some of the fun ones because, you know, I always like to take a left field approach to a lot of this stuff. I like to see, you know, what's the most that I can push these samples for to try and maybe use them in a way that wouldn't necessarily be the thing that comes to mind first, but still sounds really cool. So I made a keys part solely out of the pops that is used. It's, I think, the rim shot pop. And I kind of one note stretch them, tune them in interesting ways, and also did some mod wheel action here to kind of bring in some LFO open up a filter a little bit, or tone rather, and brighten it up. So here's cool keys. Cool keys, man. <laughs> then you bring up that LFO and check this out. So it's fun, you get a little bit of that vibrato sound, right? That's LFO routed to the micro pitch of both parts, but you also get some darkness and brightness control through these tone control knobs, which I did use over, say, the filter or my typical trick of using the compressor, just because I liked how it sounded. It's a pretty wide range of sounds, right, for a fake rim shot kind of sound. Yeah, got some keys out of it. Did something similar with Cute Tune, except I actually wrote in a little bit of a song and also tried to isolate two parts. Part two having just the pop sound, so you can see the key range is limited to C7 and G9. And then this is kind of the drum sound. So I tried to have a melody in part two accompanied by drums in part one, which you can bring in or out with the mod wheel. That's controlling the level of part two. You'll see what I mean, it's easier to just show you. Yeah, so how did I do that? One little trick that I have personally come to love is when I'm programming sequences that involve more than one note or involve kind of using this chord function so that one step has multiple keys, which is what I'm doing here. I had the melody on top and I also had the kick, snare, and hi-hat in my left hand. I will actually record the part into my DAW layer by layer quantize it and then hit step and then play it so that sound paint can read the sequence from your DAW and you can tweak it, you can tweak the velocities. It's really cool. Mod Wheel does a lot here, it works with some of the EQ bands. I know if you noticed that when the melody drops out, it kind of brings up the volume and the intensity of the drum part. I kind of wanted it to be like this back and forth trading between the melody and the drums, but the result's pretty cool, right? Here's one called Dream Sequence. This is sort of similar, sort of not. I use two layers of piano, which you all should have because it's free. If you don't, go get it because this is a fun little hidden gem here. to hear what's happening there, I'll uh, do one layer at a time. That's my drum layer. Same trick with the key range. And then the piano layers sound like this. I'm doing a pitch shift there with a square LFO, so it's going up exactly a third on that part. And 
some stuff is also being done with the decay of part two to kind of make the melody sustain a little bit more. Anyway, yeah, I have to find that LFO. Um, let me see if I can find it for you so you can see it. There it is. So yeah, using a bias upward slow sync to the rate. So obviously I'm doing trigger now because I'm running this in the DAW, but you would sync it to your DAW to get it to change at the perfect exact moment. And it's changing at a rate of every two bars. So kind of a neat little dream sequence sound. I make these not because they're my greatest musical compositions ever, but I just think it's really interesting to explore how you can really milk this art for everything it can do. And you can really create a completely comprehensive melody accompaniment and drum part within one single instance of sound paint. It's really, really cool. Here's another fun one called Magic Plume, and it utilizes our very favorite shimmer reverb. and we can change the overall pitch of that note using the mod wheel. I didn't want to do one note stretch. I thought it would be more fun to do kind of an experimental changing the pitch of the plume with the mod wheel. So kind of a noisy, atmospheric magic plume, if you will. Another fun mod wheel based program is Playful Mod Wheel. This really messes with the scatter delay mostly. I think it's just a pop sound or, or let me turn this off and just see really quickly. Yeah, it's okay. So not really a pop sound, but it's like a kick with a little bit of a burst of noise through a scatter delay. Sounds pretty cool. and I put it through another delay after that, it really kind of gives the impression of maybe dropping a ball in a very hollow warehouse or hollow room. But it becomes extra, extra fun when you start playing with the mod wheel. I'll show you why. I can play with that all day. This one's called Groove on the And, and it is a groove that accentuates the and. So you can bring in some more low frequencies with the mod wheel. That's the same trick that I used before. A reverse action on the cutoff of the high pass. This one's called hard rock. And I did copy the hard rock pattern from the actual machine for this one. And I wanted to make it a little bit harder rocky kind of sounding. So with the mod wheel, it brings in some distortion, some compression, some EQ tricks, and some Lexi reverb to kind of give you that stadium arena rock vibe. to make my EQ bands dance. <laughs> Very cool. Here's some lo-fi grunge for you. Pretty self-explanatory. Oh, I forgot to do this one. I made a little bit of a marimba type sound.
you know. And if you're curious what the sounds are happening there, I'll go ahead and turn all of the treatment off so you can just hear the individual sample that I chose. No offset, no envelope stuff. And for those playing along at home, that is E4, just tuned up about six. And then part two is kind of the resonance or the upper harmonic information aspect of the marimba sound. And then you throw that through a nice EQ that accentuates the harmonics even more and Alexi reverb and you have a very cool marimba. Just a quick disclaimer, I tried to nail the rumba groove from this actual device, but it is very tricky to get. I don't think I got it quite exact, but I did my best. So here is the rumba groove. digital delay because why not? Cool. Here's a little simple action sequence for you. Then you know I had to go back to my jazz roots and do some shuffle stuff. It's a little more modern as you open up the mod wheel and then this old school jazz kit kind of pattern that I tried to mess around with the swing function because swing is where it's at. So it gives a little more low end to the sound as you raise the mod wheel if you want to get that kick drum popping just a little bit more. So, you know, when I'm designing programs, I like to just kind of show you some of the capabilities, maybe open your eyes to things that you wouldn't necessarily think to do with this library. But just on its own, it is a vibe machine, isn't it? Now that I've done the 55 and I've thoroughly explored the 522 and now the very 64, I understand why there are piles of these things in recording studios because, you know, it's the secret sauce. It's like maybe you just find one snare that you really, really love for one situation and one kick from another machine and you're just kind of assembling this arsenal of really, really beefy, unique, characterful drum sounds. But with sound design, you don't need to do any of that. It takes up a lot less room, sounds amazing, and it's just a total blast to play with. So yeah, the very unique, quirky, and lovely AutoVary 64. Definitely go pick this one up. It's a lot of fun to play with, and I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into what you can do with it. And I think that's all I have for you. This is Shimmy, signing out. Take care.